Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Today is August 11th, 2015. My name is Rex Harris, and as always, it's an honor and a privilege to spend some time with you here this evening. And my guest of honor tonight is Cleopatra. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's all like kick back and relax. It's like, all right, now you go, girl. Whatever works for you. So, anywho, uh, tonight we're going to talk about connecting your autoresponder to your lead capture pages. And if you hear the shrieking in the background that sounds like a screech owl, that would be my granddaughter. We're going to talk about connecting uh, lead capture pages to your autoresponder tonight to help you get started with uh, building, your <coughs> building your mailing list. And again, this is gonna be a uh, very mechanical instruction. Uh, with this set of videos, we're not gonna get into a lot of the, the marketing and mindset type training. This is specifically to show you guys how to basically connect the pieces here. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn on screen sharing and we are gonna get started. And Jocelyn, if you would be so kind, if something just decides not to work right anymore, if you would let me know, it would be appreciated. So let's go ahead and log into ClickFunnels here and we're gonna pick up where we left off last time as my granddaughter is crying in the background. So hopefully her mother will be home here in a few minutes. So in the last video, for those of you that haven't watched it yet, we walked you through the basics of setting up a lead capture page with ClickFunnels and how to put together the creative components on a lead capture page. And then toward the end of that video, we showed you the basic setup of how to go about connecting an autoresponder to the actual lead capture pages. There's actually two different ways that you can go about doing that. And uh, time permitting, I'm gonna demonstrate both of those to you tonight and show you um, why there may be a specific application for each method of connecting these systems. So we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just set up a, uh, well, actually, we'll just go back to our test funnel from the last workshop, which was right here, I believe. And as I recall, it was a thing of beauty, too. I mean, it was spectacular to look at, real easy on the eyes. Uh, nope, and that is the wrong one. Let me try that again. Don't do that with me for any webinar demo. Second Mac training funnel. Oh, there we go. The one was the webinar. That's right. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Here was our, our our beautiful creation from the last time, okay? Now, as you'll recall, we went up here to the email menu, and in that video, we showed you how to connect an autoresponder from AWeber that's already established directly into your lead capture page, okay? Now, keep in mind that Click funnels will work with a majority of the autoresponders that are out there in the world of business today, uh, including uh, GetResponse. I believe it even works with Infusionsoft and um, several of the other major providers of email marketing systems. So, and we have found that when it comes to creating quality custom lead capture pages in a very short period of time, that this is a system that will serve you well. So with that, let's jump over here to AWeber, okay? I'm gonna walk you through the very beginning of building an autoresponder here this evening so you can see the entire process step-by-step step through the updated interface that is now AWeber. I believe we do have an AWeber setup video here in the academy already, but as things change and evolve, as you'll see, 
you know, so do these systems and stuff like that. And one day it can look one day or one way and the next day it can look completely different. All right. So once you've created your Aweber account, for those of you that already have it, once you log inside, this is basically what you're going to see. You're going to see your home messages, subscribers, sign up forms, reports, and list options. Okay. When it comes to creating a list, it's very simple. Okay. If you click manage lists, you're going to see where all of your lists that you're already using and have created are here. And then at the very top on the right hand side, you're going to see where it says create a list. And then when you click that, you're going to set up your autoresponder based on, in many cases, either the type of business that you're running or perhaps the type of promotion that you're running. Okay. So in this case, we will call this, um, we're going to, I'm just going to call this a uh, Periscope marketing funnel. Okay. That website in there for now. Couldn't seem to find this web page, really. Huh. I was just there. Really? Hmm. All right, so we'll try Oh, come on. Really a Weber again. Got to love the techno gremlins, I tell you. Are you using real websites or are you just making something up? Oh no, they're real websites. Okay, because I was thinking that maybe it was like if you're putting in a fake website, that's why it wasn't finding it. No, they were real. They put fake ones. They can't put fake ones in there anymore with Aweber. Right. Did you try the? I was sorry. I was looking at something else real quick. Did you try the Periscope Tools.com? Maybe that one picks up just because you're showing how to. That works too, because I, I was thinking you could do the periscope tools.com too via that one. I kept thinking, who in the world is swimming in the background? <laughs> uh, your grandson. Okay. okay, it seems to have taken that one. What was the other one? Periscope tools.com. You have an extra you have extra stuff in there? Nope. Oh, they're redirects. It's not picking up the redirects. Weird. Huh. Isn't that weird? I'm going to have to contact them and find out what that's all about. Why in the world is it not picking up redirects? Now, see, the, the direct link to my URL, it's picking up, but it's not picking up the redirect. Right. Interesting. We're going to have to fix that somehow, some way. All right, so sorry about that. So you move on. Put in your uh, mailing address because that's required now. Uh, sender name and sender email address. And it's very important that on your sender email address and your contact email addresses in any email marketing system that you're using that you use a self-branded domain name because if you try to utilize Yahoo, uh, Gmail, AOL, or any of the other free email providers that exist in our workspace, they will automatically send you to spam now if you're using that as sender email or contact emails. So name branded domain names are the best uh, as far as helping you inbox more often for those of you that are going to build this legitimately and not cheat like so many people do, but that's a story for another night. So let's create your list. Uh, list name, we'll call this... Uh, Periscopically 
speaking to go with the book. And then um, how to use Periscope and the social media to build a presence online and make money through sales of affiliate products. That probably explains it. All right. So then I'm going to click next. And then this is where we are going to set our confirmed opt-in. Only in our case, we're actually going to turn confirmed opt-in off. But when you get to this stage in AWeber, you do have to go through and select one of these first. So just click response required. Please confirm your request. You don't have to worry about doing anything here don't change anything and just click approve message here okay because now when you are back here in your main menu after you've created your list you're going to see the list that you just created pop up here in your list of autoresponders that you may have you might have three and here's where you can go in and make the changes that you need to make. So what you're going to do is you're going to go directly down and go to list settings. Everybody's saying, come on, you whatever. There we go. Okay, once we get in list settings, all right, you're going to see all that information you just put in your name, your description, your name, contact address. Okay, first thing you're going to do, and this is number one, is you're going to put your name in here and the email address that you want your confirmations sent to each time somebody subscribes, if that's what you want. You don't have to use this, but I like receiving notifications uh, when people subscribe to my list so I can take action follow up and then once I and you'll see this propagate down here just like that and then you click save settings now it's perfectly acceptable to use Gmail AOL Hotmail Yahoo etc to receive notifications you can receive notifications anywhere. But your from address, you always want that name branded, okay, because that's going to be the easiest way for you to inbox. All right. Otherwise, you're probably going to spam folders or maybe just not getting delivered at all. And you can see, you know, Can Spam Act requires um, these things. Okay. All right. And if you don't want to use your contact address, you can see there through the Can Spam Act, you can get a P.O. box and use that as well. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to personalize our list. Okay. And I do recommend that you do this um, in, you know, today's day and age based on what's, you know, so popular in the social media right? profile pictures or anything like that that you would want to utilize here. And I recommend using a picture of yourself. Okay. Or at least a picture that has you in it. All right, for your uh, branded images. So here I've got a picture here that I can just snap in there real quick, just like that as an example. Okay, and then social media sharing is uh, connected to Twitter here. I can connect it to Facebook. I'm going to put an email signature in here. Email signatures are very important. Rex Harris. Rex, okay. hold on. Rex, hold on a sec. I just okay. got a message from Tony Rios that says that you lost a screen share and your audio is breaking up. He, he said share is now back. But you were you were breaking up a little bit there. Huh, that's weird. All right, well, keep me posted again. Is okay. it clear now? 
Um, hold on a second. Tony, can you see now? Just go ahead and send me a Facebook message. Tony, is the, is the screen back up? Tony, where did you go? He was just messaging me. I oh well, that's lovely, my big old face. That's that's what we like to see. <laughs> I tested on my end; it's working good, so I'm gonna jump okay. back right. at go it here. Yeah, go ahead and go back. No worries. Well, thanks for the heads up. So okay, so in my email signature here. Uh, this is a good place to let people know where they can find me uh, online or on Skype or social media. So I might just say Skype, Rex Harris Live, you know, or in my case, all my handles are the same. So I can say Skype, Facebook, and Twitter, you know, Rex Harris Live. Um, and then I could put my phone number in here. Two three nine six nine two one four six eight. You might think, holy smokes, Rex, why are you giving your phone number out? Because I like it when people call me. It gives me something, you know, it gives me something to do, it gives me people to talk to. So Skype, Facebook, and Twitter, Rex Harris Live, phone number. Um, I can also incorporate my I can I can add my email address in there if I want, you know. I don't imagine you to write don't write a you know an autobiography there, but let people know where it is that they can connect with you. And it's also going to let them know that you're open and you know willing to connect, all right. And if you want to connect any of this to the social media, uh, just log into whatever it is that you want to connect it with, whether you're logged into Facebook or Twitter, and then you know be logged in here at the same time. And then at the click of a button, you can connect your social media to this as well. And then when you do do a broadcast to your list, it'll go out in notifications to your Twitter followers, Facebook followers so on and so forth and make sure that if you do that that you know the Facebook followers and Twitter followers that that's going out to are going to be an audience that's prepared to receive stuff like that from you because if you go out and you do a complete goodwill presence online and then the next thing you know you just start promoting stuff that turns people off so make sure that you know it, a big way to overcome a lot of that is just to be forthright and share with people exactly what it is that you do and why you're doing it all right so but I mean if you're out there targeting online marketers and stuff like that and we got a big following of those on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that and you're using those resources for those purposes and this is a perfect place to connect them and just get the message out further if you're gonna do a webinar or a free hangout or whatever it is that you're gonna do all right so Uh, global text snippets. Um, these are something that I do not use and I have never used. Okay, but for people that are using uh, using Aweber for conventional business or brick and mortar business, um, it is my understanding that, that is something that's beneficial to those people. So if that's you, all you have to do is click on the link right here, and it'll explain to you uh, what all of this is and how it works. And then once you've saved your settings here for personalize your list, okay, you're going to go up here to confirmed opt-in. Now remember last time when we were talking, or when we were setting this up, or not last time, but a few minutes ago when we were setting this up, that we selected that subject line there and just chose the random text available to us. All right. Reason being that we did that is we're going to come down here. And we are going to turn off confirmed opt-in. Okay, I never use confirmed opt-in. I don't see a time in the future where I ever will, unless it just becomes, um, you know, the rules of marketing online. If spam is ever, you know, completely illegal and they make us confirm everything, well, then I'll do it, I suppose. But you know, for now, if I don't have to, I don't. And then I click save settings. Okay. So now my autoresponder is set up and ready to go in terms of just the foundation is concerned, the actual setup. There's actually two more things that I have to do to complete the setup of my autoresponder. And the next one is create a follow-up series. And the follow-up series for your autoresponder, based on what we teach in the academy, is just a continuation of 
the goodwill marketing process. And I can give you an example of that right from the main page of the Academy. Okay. So let's scroll down here for a minute so you can kind of get an idea of what it is that we want to accomplish with our autoresponder. As the music blares in my ears, turn that off. Okay. When it comes to conversion, just so you guys understand this, when it comes to the mechanics of building a marketing system online, you have to learn how to bridge the gap between your audience and your first sales offer. People don't like to be pitched and sold, pitched and sold, pitched and sold, but they do love to buy from people that have you know, given them something amazing, which is basically what we do when it comes to marketing online the way that we teach it. All right. What works is what is being coined, and I love the way that Frank Kern put this: goodwill marketing. You just get, you know, I, I think that it really describes the that term describes the process on the front end beautifully. It really does because it really is. I mean, free incentive sounds so. Schemey sometimes. Oh, I'm gonna create a free marketing incentive. You know, it's like you're trying to scheme people into opting into your list. But with the goodwill approach, I mean, you're just going out there and leading with exceptional value right out of the gate. You're finding an audience that has a problem that needs to be solved, and you begin to offer them free solutions to that problem in sequence. Okay, and that sequence starts with your content. This can be videos on YouTube, it can be a blog post, it can be an article, it could be a free PDF, it could be anything, okay, that you post online to drive traffic, all right. The goodwill gift, okay, that in most cases is going to be a piece of content that you create that's downloadable, a video, or if, if you've got the skills, maybe a piece of software, or a PDF document that gives people exceptional value, okay, and then you're going to continue to give within the follow-up process, and the follow-up process is what starts right here when you begin to set up your autoresponder series, okay? Now, you've got three options here when it comes to setting up your follow-up message. You've got the drag-and-drop email builder, you can do plain text messages or you can code your own HTML. Okay, I recommend that you learn to use the drag and drop email builder because it is the easiest tool to use on here and it gives you the opportunity to send HTML emails that have links in them that will actually inbox properly without giving you uh, an aut automatic spam score like so many autoresponders do. And this is a huge reason why we continue to use AWeber because there are autoresponders out there. I'm not going to name names. Okay, if you want to know the names, come directly to me. I probably told you anyway already. But there's one autoresponder out there right now that if you're an online marketer, affiliate marketer, networker, or networker, or any association with those type of things, or your autoresponder has any association with those type of things, you're automatically getting a spam score of, I think it's 1.4 now. If you talk about any of those topics in your email, okay, well, with AWeber, I can talk about those topics in a professional way and still get a spam score of 0, 0.0 and deliver to somebody's inbox. So it really becomes a matter of making a qualified business decision. Well, good grief, if I'm already going to be getting a spam score of 1.4, that means that I'm going to get a smaller delivery rate with one autoresponder than I'm going to get with AWeber. Okay, now I'm actually not going to go through the process of what to say, how to say it, all that stuff tonight. We're just, like I said, this is all about the mechanics. All right, so top line is very simple to manipulate, and uh, a good rule of thumb for creating 
subject lines that people are going to open is to use their name. Now when you collect somebody's name when they opt into your list, which you should do, okay, that's recorded in your autoresponder so you can use the personalization tool and call that person by name. Rex, you know. Um, 15 new free, 15 new, actually free is a word you got to be careful with, but you can still get away with it in certain applications. I like to use hashtags because A, hashtags look cool, and B, it throws off the spam spiders. They don't pick them up. So uh, 15 new, um, whatever, 15 new, uh, free Facebook ad hacks for you. Okay, let's say if I'm delivering on an incentive, somebody has opted into my system, they've, you know, requested information on, you know, the top 50 new free Facebook ad hacks that everybody's talking about, but no one knows how to use. We're going to give you the inside scoop and show you everything tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. And that's, you know, make sure that you use that sexy marketing voice too. I learned that from Dave Wood. Okay. Heck, it's very important that you do so that. Sure. If, if, if we're just collecting the email, the first name personalization isn't going to work. If you're just collecting email, that's correct. Okay. If you're going to collect um, names and email addresses, which I highly recommend that you do using video two-step systems, especially for cold traffic. And if that sounds like Greek, don't worry. I'll explain it. You know, it's actually I explain that in the academy for pro level one and pro level two members. Okay. Then you've got when you're using those type of forms, you've got that place where you're connecting the name and the email address. <laughs> really, the only time that you want to use a lead capture page anymore that doesn't capture a name is if you're building just a small single step capture page and going after you know warm and hot traffic that's already on your list. Good to know. Okay. So, man, we've learned some cool stuff. So let's continue. So now um, one of the things that I think is important when it comes to delivering an email is A, that it look professional and B, that you make it super easy on the reader when you're creating this stuff. And this is actually something I learned um, studying, I think, Tony Rush and Dave Sharp and several other people. Uh, they've done a lot of training online, some of it free, some of it not free. But the gist of it is, you know, using a writing style that incorporates a little bit more white space and just makes it easier on the reader, makes it easier for things to flow. Okay. So I can do that by either typing my text in here like this, or I mean, I can do this too through drag and drop on the side where I can actually incorporate logos and, um, buttons for social media. I can incorporate video now. I mean, it's just, it's remarkable what you can do. Or I can actually go in here and do something like this now inside of Aweber where I put the video URL, put the title, destination URL, all this stuff. I mean, I can really build these things out and trick them out cool. And we're going to talk more, you know, about how to set these up here in a later video. But again, I really want to focus on the mechanics, okay? Um, to show you all the features or all the features here, this is like if I was going to do a big headline, I would probably move this up. You see how those kind of—it's a lot like your blog in, in in a way. You know, I mean, this gives me the opportunity to do a big headline here, my body here, and then I can actually throw an image in down here, which automatically pops up all the tools that I need to build up. So I can come in and let's say I wanted to do an email about Grumpy Cat. I probably better be careful which one I do because there's a couple of them that aren't so nice. So I better probably be careful with monkey or with uh, with uh, grumpy cat here. We'll use uh, we'll use these dancing monkeys here. If I wanted to do an email about 16 different ways to turn dancing monkeys into your best business partners, that might be an image that I would choose right there. 
okay? And then, it, like I said, it's just a matter of drag and drop. If I want to add the follow me button there for Twitter, um, there's just all sorts of different things that I can add to this, which just makes it cool. And I can actually make the monkeys bigger and smaller too by right, dragging the arrow. A few arrow. questions that are coming in on the on the page. Um, sure. Bill Jackley, Bill Jackley had asked what a hashtag is and an ad hack, and uh, you were just giving an example. Obviously, the hashtag is what you know done, which is like the pound sign in front yeah. of a word. So, like you were saying, to prevent the spam Hasht filter. Yeah, hashtags are just keywords. Okay, that's all they are. All right, let's say, let's say I'm going. Uh, I'll use Twitter for example. Let's go over to Twitter. Okay, and you'll notice that in many of the posts that you see on Facebook and Twitter and throughout the social media, that people are using these things called hashtags. Like here's an example for one: your ultimate life plan. Okay, there's really two reasons why people utilize these hashtags. Okay, reason number one is they're using this for branding purposes and actually trying to create a hashtag that people are going to follow, okay? The other reason that people utilize hashtags is because people follow hashtags like they do conversations, okay? And they'll actually use hashtags to tweet and communicate with other people too and follow conversations that are taking place during you know a topic that's trending for example um, one topic that I'm sure is going to be trending like crazy here in the next month is when Pope Francis visits the United States I hope everybody's got their seat belts buckled for that one and um, that's you will you'll notice at that point in time that there'll be all sorts of different hashtags created about that and, and people will be following all of them and you'll see them pop up all over Facebook and you know, like for example, if I wanted to follow a trending hashtag right now on Facebook, I could come over here and I could type in. I'll use Joel's "do good stuff" hashtag for example. Okay, they're just keywords that are with no spaces in a pound sign. Okay, so if you see people use one like I use them here, then you can go search them and see who else is using them. Okay, and you can see myself, Joel have used the "do good stuff." hashtag for quite a bit of our stuff because I'm a huge fan of Joel Com and I'm a huge fan of his shirts because he's just a squared away cool dude. He really is. He's one of the he's one of the good guys, you know. So that's what a hashtag is. Okay? The reason that I would use a hashtag in an email is because if I wanted to say something like um, you know, I wanted to use something that was totally spammy like get rich overnight. Okay. I can use that as a hashtag and the spam filters are, you know, have not caught them yet. Okay. I don't make it a habit of that. But if I need to use the word free, I just make it a hashtag now. And A, it kind of looks cool. It, it it you know, it makes people, you know, it kind of makes people wonder why you're doing it and it has a purpose you know it has a purpose and that purpose is to keep me going to people's inboxes okay so hopefully that answered that for you okay I can actually go in and add a logo here see the logo that image that I added there earlier I can add that I can add a signature block here and you'll see that it automatically adds my signature in there okay I can put in different dividers and in, in lines between sections and then you know more social sharing icons there as well so I can basically build up a really cool message just like this brand it up make it look nice send it out to my people okay and these will they will inbox you know this is a really cool system for this all right so and then you know depending on you know what it is that you're giving away and who you're trying to reach your first I'm gonna say bare minimum three autoresponder messages are gonna be all goodwill giving and what I would recommend that you do is that you do that goodwill giving in such a way where instead of just giving them the content via email go give them the content on your blog make them go to your blog to get it because once you've given them something cool why is that domain giving me fits tonight? That don't make any sense. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. So once you have given them something, you've given them a PDF or you've given them a video or, you know, something of value, okay, well, now I can just use my autoresponder to send them over to my blog, all right, to get more value and to start earning their trust and sealing that relationship so they're going to get to a point where they trust me enough to buy something from me, okay? So, you know, getting back to the page here at the Academy, okay, your fir the first five components, bare minimum, of your marketing system are all goodwill. Once you get people on your list, then you can start incorporating other funnels that will take that will help you get sales conversion, some on the front end, some on the back end, some on the extreme back end, some until you don't overcome their objections. Okay? But nonetheless, once you've got them on a list, as long as they stay, then you've got the opportunity to generate a profit so long as you're conducting yourself in such a way where they just love to buy from you. All right. So here's what the overall goodwill marketing flowchart looks like here, just with the added sales offer. And like I said, with the goodwill follow up, all right, give them at least three days. You know, I don't care if you create a little mini course or, or what it is that you do, but give them a few days to just connect with you and learn from you. Best to do, you know, some written content and video for best conversion. That's what it, you know, that's what gets the job done, it, you know, based on the testing that I've seen, you know, and just build a system that clones yourself. Then once you do that, then it's just a matter of continuing to create content or do whatever it is that you're going to do to drive traffic. You know, whether you're going to do paid traffic or media buys or whatever kind of traffic that you're going to utilize, Facebook pay-per-clicks, so on and so forth. All right? So once we have our first message all shored up and we're going to teach people how to sample headline Dancing Monkeys by Rex Harris, we're going to click next, okay? We're going to make sure our click tracking stays on, and we're going to click save and exit, okay? And this is going to shore up our first message that's going to go out the moment that somebody comes over here and enters their name. let me try that again and enters their name in the form here okay you'll notice that even there I got a spam score of 0.4 which I'll probably go back and clean up as I build this out but for time's sake and stuff you know this is where it leaves you now when you go back to create your second follow-up message Okay, same thing, drag and drop email builder. All right, and the reason I got to show you this is because it's going to be a little bit different next time. All right, so we'll just call this, this is letter number two. You better read it or you'll get freckles. Might even try that subject line. People would probably open that. It's amazing what people will open. Okay. Letters done, yada, yada, yada. Here we go. Save. Next. Uh, looks a little different this time. Okay. This is where you're going to determine that you're going to tell the system when to send your next message. All right. Once somebody opts in, you always want to make sure that you send them something, I believe, every day. And if you're going to build out a marketing process that goes out, you know, to 30, 40, 50 letters, you know, every day for the first five days, second week, every other day, third week, every couple of days, and never less than every couple of days because I don't care how much email that you send people, there is a point in time where if you don't do it consistently, you will become irrelevant, okay? And then here I have uh, what's known as the send window, and this gives me the opportunity to, to um, schedule when specifically 
that these go out. Um, let's say I was going to set up a marketing system reaching people who like to play golf, golf in Australia. Obviously, I'm not going to send them an email campaign based on the time in the United States. I'm going to catch them when they're awake there. So this gives me the opportunity to target any audience on planet Earth based on their time zone. Okay? So think about that because all of this counts. All right? So once I've set this, I click Save and Exit. I can actually click here, send messages based on each subscriber's local time there as well, based on what's recorded when they come in. All right, and we'll talk more about this later in terms of strategy and technique. All right, so I click Save and Exit when I'm done here. And as the Jeopardy teapot song begins to play, it is playing my head. Oh, good, I got a spam score of zero there. All right. So that's important. Now, one other thing I'm going to show you while we're on this page. Okay, there's something here called campaign sharing. Now, what campaign sharing gives you the ability to do is to come in here and create a campaign of follow-ups or broadcasts or both and then actually share them with people so they can import that directly using this code. So if I were to set up this campaign, to where you guys could use both follow-ups and broadcasts, all I would have to do is send you that code right there. You could come paste it into that box right there, and then it would automatically load any entire campaign that I already have in here, which might be something that you want to consider doing as you build teams and maybe build a team-branded marketing system. Okay. All right, we're going to run through here uh, real quick to uh, your subscribers. This is where you can manage the subscribers on all of your lists from one place. Let's say you get that dude that for whatever reason just gives you headaches and you just do not want to talk with him anymore or her anymore. You can come in here and manage all of your subscribers. I can actually uh, import subscribers here right now. And then um, I'm not quite sure why on the subscribers page they're giving me the option to create a sign-up form. That's new. That's generally done right here under sign-up forms. But generally here, this is, is where you get the access to the interface where you can manage your subscribers. And I have no idea why they've changed that. That doesn't even make any sense the way that they have it set up there. So... See, add subscribers. That's going to, yeah, that's that's importing them there. Okay, which you can do now with Aweber. Create a sign-up form, which takes you here. And this is manage subscribers. I wonder if maybe they are still working on this or something like that. So, anywho, you guys need to see where you can do that. So let's go back here to manage lists, and then we'll go down to list settings here. No, it's not in list settings either. Subscribers, manage subscribers. What are you looking for again? My subscribers. The way they have that page set up now is just right, totally yeah, just, whack. If you clicked on subscribers, it would show you the people that were active. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what happens when you do the manage subscribers? Just exactly what happened there. I can either add subscribers or it takes me automatically to the sign-up form. That's so I guess weird. I know, so I'm going to have to go in here and figure out what they did. Because it's very important that you know how to manage your subscribers in case you've got to evict somebody from your list. Let me go here and just see one more time. Yeah, because I mean, I do that. There's times where I go in here and I delete people from my list. Let's look at import history. Maybe looks like I don't have any imports there. Find out more. All right, well, I'll find out more, and we'll get that in the next video. Yeah, that's, that's really just, bizarre. Typically, that normally bizarre. when you send that, it gives you a list, and it shows yeah. you where your subscribers, if they're active or whatever else. How do I see my subscribers? Let me click that real quick and see what it says. To see all the subscribers in one list, first choose the list. Say choose the list. Okay. Which I did. 
that's manage lists, subscribers, manage subscribers, still takes you back to the same place. So I'll have to pick it apart later because we're running out of time here and I need to show you sign up forms. Okay, sign up forms. All right, this is basically the element that you're going to use to connect AWeber with ClickFunnels or whatever system that you're utilizing. Okay, and there's two different ways to integrate this. All right. And let's go through and do this first. Let's create a sign up form. Okay? Because of the fact that I'm collecting name and email address here, all right? When I click create my first sign up form, it's really very simple. I don't have to do a lot of techno design work or stuff. Here's what I do. First thing I do is I come here and I delete the the header, I delete the the privacy, I delete anything with a red box that shows up till I have the name, the email and a button. Okay, everything else I delete, then I click save form. <clears throat> I wonder if maybe they're not doing some work in here tonight because it's, it's acted a little bit clinky, which is not common, but let me refresh that. It's, it jammed up there. Okay, save form. Okay, form saved, go to step two. Okay, now what I usually do is I usually name all of my forms exactly as I name my list or very close to that so I know exactly what's what. All right, <clears throat> my thank you page here in most cases is going to be a custom page that I create. This is where I'm going to send somebody to download something, okay? This is where inside of ClickFunnels, okay, when you are creating your marketing system, your thank you page here, this is what you're going to copy and paste here because that's where you want people to go once they enter the form. You want them to go to your thank you page or maybe you want them to go directly to a blog page where you're going to give them value there. But in this type of marketing system, this is all about driving people to value. You're not selling with this system yet. Okay? Your sales in this system will come later. <coughs> Okay, now if you have somebody that, and you always want these to open in the same window, there's very rarely an occurrence where you want your thank you page to open in a new window, very rarely. So always leave that blank. Your already subscribed page, this is where somebody that's opting into your list is trying to opt in again. Okay. I don't use custom already subscribed pages because AWeber always gives me a default. Okay? And my line of thought is, you know, unless somebody is opting in again just because they wanted what I was giving away and couldn't find it, the majority of the people that are opting in again, if they're opting in that many times to where I've got to create a thank you page, uh, chances are if their memories at, at that level, then I'm not sure that I even want them I mean, we want to work with them, you know, not being judgmental, just like some people just aren't made for this. Okay, so I'm going to click Save Form. Then I'm going to go to Step 3, and I'm going to choose I will install my form here. Now you're going to see that you've got two different kinds of forms that you can install here. You've got a JavaScript snippet form, and you've got a raw HTML version form. You want the raw HTML version form, okay, and you're going to copy out all that code as it's highlighted. Then you're going to go back to ClickFunnels, select your opt-in page, open the editor again. All right, and then under email, okay, you can see where all of this is connected here from the last video. I'm actually going to remove it and then show it to you one more time. All right, I'm going to select the integration. Okay. Now, even though I'm using a form from AWeber, I'm going to choose HTML form because I'm not using direct integration. So I choose HTML form, and I set an integrated action, integrate existing form. 
add HTML below. Okay. There is my code. All right. And then it's going to tell me to parse and save the form. And then all I have to do is sync the name form and the email form on that page and click save. And now my autoresponder is connected to my lead capture page. And when somebody clicks the big pink button and opts in, they're going to be directed to the thank you page that I created inside ClickFunnels. Okay. So that's the step-by-step walkthrough process of connecting AWeber to your autoresponder. Okay. And if you guys are, if you want training on how to set up your, create your autoresponder series or, you know, anything specific that you want to learn, you can, uh, actually go inside the academy now and request uh, private coaching now. Uh, just log into your accounts, go up to the left-hand side and uh, request private coaching. Our private coaching is now by application only um, and all of that is explained there inside the academy. But you know, for those of you that are pro level one and pro level two members, there's already a ton of training in there that already talks about much of this stuff. Um, but we got some really cool and new, exciting things coming for you guys here over the next month. Uh, we've got a new uh, Facebook product coming out called Laura McCarthy's Pay-Per-Click Reality Check. That's going to be a standalone product inside the Academy, and that will be available, I believe, by September 15th or sooner. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. So with that, we're coming up on the top of the hour. So let me jump back here and see. Do we have any questions that I can answer for anybody before we wrap up for tonight? Any questions? No, right. but hey, you know, it looks like you would, you would, if you go to into your AWeber and you know how you're on that um, account overview page. Yep. If you scroll down past recently sent broadcast, you'll see where it says list stats. Yep. And then it has an option. It says email is. And then if you enter in their email, you can track them in any list. Okay. That might be how they set it up now. I'll have to dig in there and find out. But thanks yeah. for that. I don't remember seeing it that way before. No, they changed it because it used to be you go in there, manage subscribers, and you would have this table open up where you could just – paste in an email or look for somebody by name and it doesn't matter which lists are on boom they would show up so they've yeah. obviously changed that so we'll have to explore yeah. that so we can talk about it next time so anybody else on the uh, other page have any questions let me um, there was that. a bunch of stuff that was asked um, but I think it's, uh, Laura I know had done um, a basic a Weber thing at one point, I think there might have been a PowerPoint that she could post in the group that will help answer um, a lot of those questions. Um, Bill was asking certain things that because you went through it kind of quickly, so I think that that could probably be handled at another time. Alright. Alright, I don't see any other questions there, so and again, you have this video to go back and review as often as you want. I'll get it pasted into the academy there under Tech and Mech tonight for everybody. And uh, with that, I hope everybody has a great evening. God bless you, and we will see you back again Thursday night for the blog workshop. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the group for news and updates. Talk to you soon. God bless you. Yay. Bye for now. Thank you.